Hola amigos. So we're up in our attic space and I want to show you exactly how we've handled our insulation in between our roof rafters. So we are in what's called a condition attic. We have all of our air conditioning inside of the attic space, all of our ductwork inside of the attic space. And we run all these ducts before we end up installing this insulation. This insulation does require netting to be stapled to all the rafters in order to hold the insulation. Then these gentlemen come in and shoot the insulation in with a tube in these holes and it densely packs all of these rafter bays with this blown in fiberglass insulation. Now, oftentimes roof rafters are only seven and a quarter of an inch of an inch. That occurs all the time. And that is not gonna provide enough R value in inches for this blown in insulation to suffice per code. Uh, again, keep in mind, spray foam only requires R21. The Any alternative to spray foam is going to be an R38 that's being required, and that is essentially due to the air sealing capabilities of spray foam, um, is at least what building code is thinking. Now, our home is air sealed from the outside, so it's actually got the same benefits of spray foam, of being an air seal, and actually is air sealed better than spray foam, and we're able to confirm that using a blower door test before we actually install any insulation. So that rule should not necessarily apply to us, but it does. And since it does, we still have to accommodate the R38 insulation. So we do have R6 on top of our roof decking using that zip R. So we're able to count that uh, R6, but we want to typically get about 10 inches of insulation in between the roof rafters and what I have come up with in order to do that that works every single time I've built a house and here in the city of Austin have not had any pushback from inspectors whatsoever is I've actually started draping the netting right so I've got seven and a quarter uh, inches on these roof rafters right here and then the netting is draped down to about 13 inches and then I am trying to just take an average of the seven and the 13 and I'm landing on something that's right around 10, right? And so again, seven up there, seven up there, and then 13 down here, 13 down here. And then I'm saying the average is gonna be a 10. That's how the insulation is factored and measured by inspectors. They take an overall average. They're not concerned with one isolated location. So once I take the 10 inches average and I apply either a four or 4.4 R value to that 10 inches. If it's densely packed, I can apply a 4.4 R value. Then I end up with something above R40. You know, it can be all the way up to R44 uh, with the average of 10 inches along this rafter bay. So that is how we successfully install the blown in fiberglass insulation in these nets for ceiling spaces and how we avoid having to do, or attic spaces rather, and rafter bays, and how we avoid having to utilize spray foam in these areas. And it is important to have foam outside of the decking if you want to avoid spray foam, just to minimize any potential condensation that could occur via dew point when you have a significant temperature, di temperature differential on the outside of the roof decking versus on the inside, and just a minimum of one half an inch of rigid foam on the outside of the roof decking or above this insulation is really all that's required to make this a good practice here in the hot humid south. I have run that by Joe Stebrick himself and he has blessed that and told me that half an inch is all you need. So for example, if I had R3 up as my roof decking, R3 zip, um, that would suffice, which I've done many times. In this case, I've got more, I've got R6 zip up on my roof uh, and then I've got this here. You have alternatives to using zip for getting exterior insulation on the roof. You can also do a zip sandwich where you do zip, uh, R3 or R6 foam, and then you do another layer of zip. That's an option too. Um, so there's lots of options on how to get that half inch of exterior insulation up on your roof. But I really like this because I am not smelling anything toxic in here. This has no added urea formaldehyde and I have a ton of insulation. And whereas that spray foam is getting that R21, I mean, I have like, in essence, double that amount of insulation and then some, and the cost is roughly half of what I was paying for spray foam. So to me, this is a huge victory. Uh, we handled the walls pretty much the exact same way. 
except the walls are either going to be two by four walls or two by six walls so you're not going to be able to get this amount of uh, thickness but it suffices in all code contingent situations to be adequate amounts of insulation especially when you add exterior insulation though the exterior insulation is not required on the outside to do this practice hope that helps adios amigos